Hello YouTube, this is A Plus Cog, and I wanted to show you some updates on the game engine. I've been working on the implementing physics, and uh, I think I found a pretty good, pretty good way of doing things for now. Uh, first, I'll run a demo for you, which is just a, some simple gravity. The objects appear, and then they fall. So how I'm doing my physics is pretty simple. Um, it can best be described with a uh, with an example. Let's say there's a newspaper company, and uh, and you want to get and you want to subscribe to it, so you get updates from it. Um, so there's there's the newspaper company, and you subscribe to it. So whenever it creates a new newspaper it automatically sends out a uh, sends out a newspaper to you and this can happen for any number of people but in this case uh, they are physics objects and a and a uh, physics subject for the newspaper now each object on screen so each of these faces or each of these tennis balls they subscribe to a certain physics object. Um, this is this is called the observer pattern for those of you who are familiar with design patterns in programming. Um, so the so the physics subjects are represented with with rectangles and you can place them around on the screen. Uh, so say you have say here's your screen where your objects will be drawn and you want and you want a particular physics over the entire screen say gravity so any object within here is affected by gravity and it just and it just falls down um, then you can have then you can have another area of physics say over here if you want water and you want buoyancy on objects which counteracts gravity and pushes objects in it up um, so these these in the engine are called forces, and you can place multiple forces around the screen. And whenever an object whose uh, bounding box intersects uh, one of these physics forces, then it will subscribe to it, and on the game loop, it will receive updates from those physics based on the object attributes such as speed and position. I created a couple other tests to show you. Um, one was reverse gravity which makes objects go up and that's just flipping the force of the... it was just flipping the direction of the force. Here's the text file for reverse gravity. So. Um, on this line, it's negative 100, negative 100, then, well, which is the starting position for the bounding box of the physics, and then 1,100, 1,100 for the width and height of the physics box, then 0 and negative 0.1. These are forces. The first is the force in the x direction and the second one is force in the y direction. So I could I could change this for one let's do one for x and rerun this. Things fly off to the right side of the screen because it's increasing the position of every object in the force box by one every sixtieth of a second or so. Um also, like I said, you can add multiple physics to the screen, and this test was bounded. Dot text. So, in this example, there there is no there is no huge. I think I paused. 
guess I can't draw on the screen and have it run at the same time. But anyway, um, for this example, there are no that I didn't add gravity, so these objects just spawn with random position and velocity inside of the window, and I have four physics boxes or physics subjects in this test. So here is four, and then the uh, attributes of the physics subjects. I just have them around the screen. So here's one, here's another, here's another, and here's the last one. Now, these objects just float around the screen, and once they intersect with these physics subjects, if they subscribe to that subject, their velocity gets updated. Um, their velocity gets updated, and then in the data loop, their position is changed based on their velocity. Once they leave, once they leave the physics object area, once they no longer intersect, then they unsubscribe to the physics object and they just continue, continue doing what they're doing. I can add a few more of these objects and they'll all run. It runs smoother when I'm not recording, but it's still running okay now. It's not yet optimized, so I do have to go back through and change a couple things. Um, as you can see, physics is also not working, so I will have to create a collidable physics object, which will probably be an extension of the physics object I have. Um, other things to come are animated, animated sprites, which are one of the properties of the graphics body, which the physics um, which the physics body subclasses. So for animated sprites, this they will show they'll show motion. They won't show static images. Uh, based on their direction, they'll loop through a sprite sheet and change the image that will get rendered to the screen. Um, I want to work on that. And also, like I said, I want to implement collisions, which shouldn't be too bad. Um, yesterday, I went over to a friend's house to talk about controlling these objects on screen because when we when we are done with it, I want to I want to create a game with this engine, and we've been talking about that for a while. He's uh he's working on a battle system, an R an RPG battle system, and uh, I think I will work on a simple platforming, um, simple platforming controls for these for the purpose of these videos, and it shouldn't be too hard to switch in between either the RPG uh, controls for like a Final Fantasy uh, battle system and. Uh, the platforming controls because of how we're thinking about designing the the controller for the game engine. They'll, you can swap them out and uh, control objects differently just based on the controller. So there's a lot of work to be done. Um, I need to I need to read a book for school. So I might not have have an update in in a while, but I will continue working on this, and hopefully more videos will be up soon. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't want to drag it out any longer. I showed what 
find find the show and uh, I think that's all. Um, oh, another thing, ice physics. I wanted to create an ice physics thing. So for the ice physics, you have the screen again, which uh, there you go. You have the screen, and I want ice physics on the bottom. So you create a physics subject there, and then when objects come down and collide with collide with it. Uh, well, it wouldn't be so much for collisions as when you're controlling an object and you want to say move to the left, then it, it's going to have negative effects on your player move speed. So if your move speed was 25 pixels per, per frame, then it's going to divide it by 5 or something. So you increase your velocity a lot a lot slower when you when you try moving and then when you try stopping or changing position it's again going to negatively affect the uh, position you want to go in so it's just going to slow down how how fast you yeah how fast you can change direction and speed up and, and stuff um, that it seems pretty pretty exciting. I'm uh, looking forward to working well with my friend and getting these controllers kind of shelled out and working. Um, again, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave me a comment to let me know how I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, this is A Plus Cog. See you later.